Hey everyone, my name is Mr. Keel, and today I'm going to be giving you a tour of the Great Barrier Reef. So I'm here on my webcam, but I'm actually going to close this out. I just wanted to say hi so we can focus on the tour. Now, this tour is going to have a couple different components today. I'm going to start by showing you a food web of the Great Barrier Reef. I'll come back and explain this first. Then we're going to zoom in and go underwater and kind of do a little walkthrough of the reef. Then I'm going to take you to see some 360 degree images that'll be a lot like what we see when we're underwater, but they're a little bit higher resolution, a little bit sharper. Um, we're going to visit a website for an organization uh, that supports the coral reefs. And we're going to go to the Smithsonian to just briefly look at their coral reef exhibit. So um, this food web is a great place to start because this is going to kind of tell us how does this ecosystem work? Um, every ecosystem has producers, animals that do photosynthesis, um, and it has animals that consume them, or sorry, uh, plants or organisms that do photosynthesis. Then it has organisms that consume them or eat them, animals that consume them, and so on and so forth. And that's how the energy flows through the food web. So here we can see our producers in the Great Barrier Reef are zoanthellae, that's kind of a crazy name, and algae. Well, zoanthellae is actually more common when we think. This is a little organism. You can see it right there. It's actually just the green stuff. It's not even this big thing that lives inside coral. So this big structure right here, this, this is called a coral polyp, um, is where all the zoanthellae live. They make food using photosynthesis, and then the coral can consume that food. Um, next up, we have, the, we have the coral that's consuming the food that is consumed by a parrotfish. Parrotfish, we'll see some today. They can bite off pieces of that coral. They can consume it. A parrotfish is a secondary consumer because it eats those primary consumers. Um, an angelfish is a primary consumer because it eats that producer. Um, and then a barracuda could eat a parrotfish or a black tip reef shark or a white tip reef shark could eat a parrotfish or a barracuda or an angelfish. So each level is characterized by what an animal eats. And animals can actually change levels. Like right here, I have a black tip reef shark as a fourth level consumer because it eats a barracuda. But if it ate a parrotfish, it would also be a third level consumer. The bigger distinction is who is a producer, who is a consumer, and who is a decomposer. So down here, we have the leopard sea cucumber that we're also going to see today. When any of these animals die, um, that dead matter in the water is going to get consumed by the sea cucumber and recycled back to the bottom of the food web. But this sea cucumber isn't making the energy in the food web. It's just recycling the nutrients. All the energy in this food web, we need to remember, comes from the sun, right? It comes from the photosynthesis that this zoanthellae or this algae does, and that's how it moves through the ecosystem. So you guys can pause, take a look at this, but I'm going to move on to our main tour. So let's start and let's zoom in and let's get our first look at some coral here. And the first coral that we're going to see, you guys can see from the label, is called staghorn coral. Let's look around. Wow, here we are. We have that nice light coming down. There's our sunlight that we need to feed the zoanthellae, which are going to feed our coral. And I want to find ah this brain coral. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that brain coral and that staghorn coral. Now, these are two types of hard coral. In uh, the Great Barrier Reef, there's over 600 species of coral, and we group them into two categories, hard coral and then soft coral. Like this coral up here could wave uh, back and forth and be flexible because it doesn't have that hard skeleton. These guys are hard coral, um, which is really important because they provide the structure of the reef. All of this reef right here is either living coral or it's older dead coral that provides the structure. And as coral, new coral grows and old coral dies, it grows up and it makes these big mounds to get closer to the surface. And that's why hard coral is so important. Soft coral is a little bit more delicate um, and it, it actually uh, isn't, as, um, isn't as strong technically as, as hard coral and it can die off a little bit easier. But a lot of soft coral has a great defense. Um, if you guys have ever seen Finding Nemo, Nemo is a false percula clownfish. 
that one right there. And they live inside a soft coral called an anemone, a magnificent sea anemone that's actually uh, poisonous to any animals that touch it. Um, it has a toxin uh, that will keep animals away and that fish is immune to it. So there's our hard and our soft coral. Let's move on to our next location. And we're gonna take a, a look at a, a native species that lives here, the six banded angelfish. Oh, there it is. And it's actually right by some brain coral. Look at that, six banded angelfish. Now, how do I know this is a six banded angelfish? Well, actually I just came on here and like a good scientist, I looked at the shape, I looked at the color, I know that I'm in the Great Barrier Reef, and I found a guide website where I could look at all different types of fish from this area. So I already know that's an angelfish, so I'm going to click on the angelfish category, but you could click on lots of different categories here and explore any animal that you see. You really just have to remember what size it is, what pattern it has, what color it has, and where you saw it, and you can identify it. So let's go back. Let's look at that angelfish. I'll show you guys how I found it. There it is, six-banded angelfish. When light shines right on this guy, um, he or she uh, has these beautiful blue spots. There's our six-banded angelfish. Lots, lot more coral. We have some soft coral up here. We have some more staghorn coral. I'm gonna move on to our next location. So next we have the animal that I was talking about in our food web called a parrotfish right here that beautiful bright fish now parrotfish are called parrotfish because they actually have beaks that one in the distance that's this guy right here a steephead parrotfish and look at that beak wow right he actually bites off or she actually it's pretty complicated parrotfish change diet they change coloration they'll change color throughout their life and I say he and she because they actually can change sex too, which is wild. Um, but they bite off pieces of this coral because they want that zooanthelia and they want the algae that lives in the coral. And they chew it up, chomp it up, eat the algae, and they actually poop out sand. So next time you're on a beach by a coral reef and you see that sand, you might be walking on parrotfish poop, which isn't gross at all. It's just sand. But these are really important animals. We'll see a lot of them as we move around. And anytime you're at a coral reef, um, you have a really high likelihood of seeing a parrotfish. Anytime you guys want, you can pause this and you can rewind. You can actually look at those two species, the bleakers and the steephead again, if you want to. So um, our final species we're going to check out here. Wow, look at all this beautiful coral. Wow. Is a sea cucumber. Can you guys find it? Where's the sea cucumber? It is right there. And look at that crazy pattern it has. So like I talked about in our food web, sea cucumbers are really important decomposers for coral reef ecosystems. There's lots of other decomposers, but a sea cucumber is a really important one. And how did I identify this guy? I used a guide. I know that a sea cucumber is a type of echinoderm. They're related to um, sea stars and sea urchins. So I clicked on this and I went and I went, oh, there he is, leopard sea cucumber. Um, really important decomposer. Coral reefs would not be able to function without sunlight coming down from above, without all these animals that contribute to coral and the zooanthelia that contributes to the hard and soft corals, um, all the consumers and decomposers like this. So that concludes this part of our tour. Now I'm gonna move on to a couple 360 degree um, images and check this one out. I just wanted to show you all this one because this really lets us see how different coral can look. Look how flat some of these corals are compared to what we've seen. We still see some of that staghorn coral, but we really see some different coral, especially this one, check that out. And notice again, we're really close to the surface because all that energy that's fueling this whole ecosystem is coming from the sun. Move on to another one. Oh, here we go. Nice. See these fish, these beautiful yellow fish, along with uh, some of these photographers that are taking these 360 degree camera views are snapper. 
or type of yellow snapper. And you can see, as we look down, the ocean's getting darker down there, which lets us know why coral needs to grow closer to the surface. We actually lose sunlight as we go down. But look at this breathtaking view of these snapper and these divers. Wow. Let's move on to our next one. Here's some more amazing coral. We see some soft corals hanging off the side. We see some hard corals. And actually, those are parrotfish up there. And I know what type of parrotfish that is. I don't even need to see it just from the shape. It can actually see it biting off some coral over here. Just from the shape. Let's check it out. Fish. Uh, parrotfish. Boom. Green humphead parrotfish. I can tell because we're in we're in the Western Pacific and they have that hump on their head. Now we have another uh, species that's really cool here. Check it out. Here's one of our top predators, uh, white tip reef shark. They hang out on the outside of the reef. They'll eat fish. Um, a lot of fish that are that are weak and and old, which sounds terrible, but it's not. It actually keeps the population of fish on the reef really strong and really healthy. Any fish that's sick gets eaten by a shark and other ones can take its place, can, can eat the food that it would have, um, can help that ecosystem function. So even higher level consumers like a fourth or a fifth or a 20th level consumer are really important to a reef. Let's check out our last image here. Ooh, I wanted to show you guys this one because these are some of my favorite reef fish. Look how bright these little fish are. These are called damselfish. If we check out our guide again, um, let's see, small fish. Let's see, oh, there we go. Blue damsel. I, I bet these are blue damsels, not neon damsels, because just the tail fin is yellow. Yeah, but pretty cool. And the last species I want to show you guys, check these out. Look at those vibrant colors, right, with the sunlight in the background. So I figured out what this one was. Let's do it together. Let's do our last one together. Um, that looks like it's the size of a snapper. So I'm just going to click the snapper category. And let's look. Oh, that looks like it. Let's look back and forth. That's definitely it. Diagonal bands, yellow fins, yellow lips. That is the diagonal banded sweet lips. What an awesome name. You discover a fish, you get to give it a common name. But all animals have that, that, that same scientific name, right? And so that's our last destination. All these photos were taken with this camera right here by an organization called the Ocean, Ocean Agency. Now, the Ocean Agency accepts money. They go around the world. They talk about conservation, which means not polluting, protecting areas where reefs are so people can't um, fish and, and catch all the fish or people can't boat through there and the boat propellers hurt the reef. Um, in organizations like this, uh, the reason they take these amazing photos is to raise awareness about the reef, to, to raise awareness about how beautiful these ecosystems are and how we need to protect them. And without organizations like, like the Ocean Agency, um, you know, reefs would be in trouble. We need humans. One of our main roles is to, is good stewards of the environment is to protect delicate ecosystems like reefs. Um, organizations like the Smithsonian and museums, uh, if you ever get a chance to go to an aquarium, um, the Smithsonian is not an aquarium, it's a museum, but they actually do have a small little aquarium. And even they have an exhibit talking about coral reefs, a delicate balance of life. And really their, um, their exhibits telling us about reefs, telling us why we should care, how we can help are super important to the survival of these delicate ecosystems. Check it out, parrotfish. Some other brightly colored fish and look at all that nice coral. So next time you get a chance to visit a museum, um, next time you get a chance to see uh, a video about some coral reef, think about these organizations that help preserve them. Think about how they function. Think about those food webs. Um, and you guys can go to this website. You can go to reef, reefguide.org to identify fish. You can go to the ocean agencies. Um, image collection, and you can see images from all around the world, not just the uh, the Great Barrier Reef. 
Um, and you can even go and check out this virtual tour of the Smithsonian, which is, which is really cool. Um, and check out more oceanic exhibits. Hope you guys enjoyed my tour today. That is the Great Barrier Reef. Have a wonderful day.